This morning we are so privileged to listen to the word of God. Our chosen speaker this morning is a man of God. The union or the communication director of our very own very own union uh, North Philippine Union Conference, Pastor Joe Orbe. Good morning. It's wonderful to be in church, most especially on the Sabbath day. Uh, let's take this on screen. I wish I, had, I can do away with this visual aids, but for the sake of the clarity of what we're going to talk about this morning, as we study the Word of God, I'm putting out on screen. I just hope you brought, uh, you brought your Bibles with you, as there is no worship without the opening of the Word of God, as a corporate people who honor Him and who see God as one who is great, loving, and wonderful. Um, we've been here since Thursday. I traveled all the way from the farthest coast of Luzon down in Southern Luzon Mission, that's in Legaspi. And coming home, I, drove, uh, I rode all the way to Baguio. Then uh, we'll go, we'll, I'll be going home tonight, or this afternoon, so that tonight I could get uh, a little five hour or six hour sleep, hug my children. Early tomorrow morning at 4.30, I have to rush to the airport take my flight all the way to Puerto Princesa. Come home after two days or three days from Puerto Princesa, ride the bus, change luggage, ride the bus all the way to Northern Luzon Mission, back in Artacho. And after that, the last point I have to hurdle with will be San Pablo and Central Luzon Conference at the heart of Metro Manila. Why all of this travel, guys? Why all of this busy itinerary? You see, the church in the entire archipelago of the Republic of the Philippines is up to something that we have never put or placed our hands since 1905 when this church was established in the Philippines. And that is no other than putting the Advent Gospel in the airwaves particularly on national television. Amen? Amen? We're all busy getting ready for this event when we would launch it by God's grace on December, before the turn of the year. But we don't want to miss that while we are preparing for this event, that we also prepare our hearts and our minds to meet the God for which we have been proclaiming through the airwaves. We might so be, we, we might so, we might get so busy of all of this and we might begin to forget the God we are proclaiming, the God we are waiting. You see, friends, uh, I don't know how I can put everything in so short a time that we have this morning. This morning when we went for breakfast, there were only a few of us, a number of 10 probably, and I took my plate, sat down with them. I was telling the other gentleman, why don't you put more on your plate? Eat more? Because I plan to preach two hours this morning. <laughs> anyway, it's cold, it's rainy out there, so we might spend two hours studying the Word of God. <laughs> And uh, he started looking back at the table. 
what he could get more. <laughs> this will be two hours. <laughs> Probably was looking for sweet potato, balinghoy, or what that would get him through the task of listening and sitting down there for two hours. May the good Lord bless us as we open the scriptures this morning. Let's bow our heads. Father God, it has always been our joy to sit before your presence. We have been longing, we have been desiring that one day soon you will truly come as it has been the hope not only of today and this generation, but our forefathers who have lived in faith even before us. Oh God, we're already tired. We wanted to come home with all the things that you have set before us, every means we could use to proclaim your gospel. Use it, dear Lord, so that very soon we will see your loving, merciful face to receive us to that beautiful house you have prepared for each one of us. Thank you, Father, for the promise that as we open your words today, you will fill us with your redeeming grace, but most especially the hope and the certainty that your coming is very soon, for we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me get straight to it. The Communication Department of the North Philippine Union Conference has been very busy in every mission, in every conference under its territory, with all its counterparts, to get ready to put the gospel through national television. Our friends from the South Philippine Union Conference has already been in the task for 18 long years. 18 long years, and Luzon is just starting from the dust. It's long overdue, but it has never been late. For in the clock of God, there is nothing late, there is nothing early, but everything comes in His plan, in His own timing. Amen? I'd like to bring you back to a study from the scriptures. In view of revival and reformation, our global church president encourages us to come before the presence of God in revival and reformation for two things. Number one, go back to the Bible. No revival and reformation can happen unless we open the law, unless we open the scriptures, unless we open the grace in the word of God. Each member of the church must understand that it is his duty to get connected with God in every worship time to bring his Bible to church. This technology for something has brought us to enhance our worship. But for all its sake, it can also curse our relationship with God. When we begin to put everything on the screen, we fail to read our Bibles, even in church. Satan loves us to think that it's okay. It's written there. It's right there on big screen. Much more attractive than your Bible. Then you begin to believe. Oh yes, that's the same Bible begins to lull you, pretty soon you'll be thinking, you don't need this printed page. Let's get it on the cell phone. Let's get it on the iPod. Let's get it on the iPad, on the iPhone, whatever I you've got there, let's put the Bible there. But you see, friends, if, if this printed page is not at all important to God, He would not have protected the printed page the very first time it was written by its first author down the century to our time today through the Dark Ages. The Bible, no matter how technology may develop, it will remain until the close of probation. Amen? Our publishing houses will never close, even without money. 
PPH will remain. Every literature evangelist would have its work because the printed page will remain there. That's if you're reading the spirit of prophecy. That's why, second, the global president says, towards revival and reformation, come, go back to your spirit of prophecy. This is a remnant church, so distinct from the other faith, that it has the end time spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus. This too must come together. If we are to experience revival and reformation. If we cling to the Bible and ignore the spirit of prophecy, friends, we might miss things that would help us understand more the scriptures. But if we live the Bible and just maintain the spirit of prophecy, we might also step into the danger, into fanaticism. This too must come together, said the world church president, in order to experience true revival and reformation through the same and only one spirit of God. How wonderful the God we serve. Gave us two tools so that we may not turn left or right and be away from God's path as we see him in the last days. Value your Bible Value the spirit of prophecy. More will come to church. More will go out of the church because of these two things. Those who will abandon the importance of the spirit of prophecy to help us understand the Bible will also abandon the church. Those who will abandon the straight teaching of the scriptures and go into fanaticism of the spirit of prophecy will also abandon the church. It is only when we strike the balance between these two witnesses in the last days that we will remain faithful in the end times. Amen? Go back to the Bible. Go back to the spirit of prophecy. I'm bringing you back to the Bible today as we take the first recorded human communication director. Huh? In the beginning of the church in the New Testament. Right there in the New Dispensation, we have the only record of the first communication director as a human being. The first gospel was preached in the New Testament before the advent or the pre-advent of Christ by an angel. Am I right? And in the last days, it is Still an angel who will sound the trumpets of the three angels' messages. Am I right? But within this time, the beginning and towards the end, God has tasked the human being. Are you still with me? The church comprised by human beings. They will be the most effective communicators of his love and his redeeming grace. When he shall appear from the clouds of heaven. And the first communicator of the gospel, we find his record. Right there, at the beginning of the New Testament of our Bible, it has been recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I have purposely chosen Luke for our study this morning. Look at it. It's in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Right there. Matthew started with the genealogy of Jesus Christ, but in Luke, you find a different account. It starts with the first human communicator of the gospel, officially recorded in the gospel. Have you seen it? That's why I told you, bring your Bible to church. I'm not preaching anything beyond what the Bible tells us. Come on, quickly, browse your Bibles. Are you there? Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and I'm starting in verse 5. Who am I referring to in this story? Come on, tell me. Yes, it's the life recorded by Luke of John the Baptist. Then I, ver I start on verse 5. And there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named what? Zacharias. 
of the course of Bebiya and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was what? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. You see friends, when God communicates, he uses his people to communicate God's love too. You don't expect this from unconsecrated hearts. God channels his gospel also to the chosen people whom he has set apart to communicate his gospel. And therefore, we are tasked in our time today that as we are enlightened with the gospel, we take also the responsibility to communicate this distinct message to the world. That's why we are called from darkness to lightness, to light as a church. Because we have a message to communicate. And here in this passage, you find that it was Zacharias and Elizabeth that all of this started. I want to think that television or communicating the gospel in television didn't start only today. It must have started, it must have been conceived long time ago. But in God's perfect timing, he puts everything in its right place so that it could per perfectly happen in the time he has set forth. Amen? And so it's never late. As some others might think, oh, pastor, look. Look at Kibuloi. He has been on TV for quite a long time. Do you see churches of Kibuloi? Like the number of churches of Seventh-day Adventist Sands? There are only few. What about Soriano? You would hardly find a, a, a church of Soriano except those that have been named as, uh, what, centers. What about the Iglesia Mi Cristo? They have been long time in TV. Where are the Seventh-day Adventists? Right there at the heart of Metro Manila. Where are they? And we might think and construe that we have been long overdue too late. But when God calls the time, it's perfect timing. Perfect timing. John the Baptist could have come to Elizabeth and Aaron in their youthful years, but God, that wasn't God's plan at all. God wanted John the Baptist, the first communicator of repentance, recorded in the gospel in the New Testament in the late years of Elizabeth and Zacharias. Was God at fault? Was he wrong? Does he not understand his timetable? The coming of John the Baptist in the late years of Elizabeth and Zacharias was the perfect timing set forth by God. Friends, let us not ridicule the work simply because we are too late among the others. Because when God works, it's the perfect timing. Let's continue with verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. How would you like to be called righteous before God? Huh? It's the best title you would ever have, friends. I would even prefer to, have be, to be given such a title even if I wouldn't be the president of MPM. Even if I wouldn't be the director for communication at the time TV is about to happen in Luzon. I would rather be named as one in God's mercy and in all humility righteous before the God of heaven. I want to strike this out because the moment this will find success, many will be taking the merit for which it has been victorious. I don't want to think that this will happen because I place my energy on it or anybody else. I want to think that it will happen, we will be able to communicate the gospel on national television because God has been there and he has provided everything for us. It's nice to be called righteous before God. It's never wrong to desire to be called righteous before God. 
But when you work for righteousness, that becomes a problem. When God endows you with this righteousness, it is only by His grace and not by the merits of your work. Oh yes, Zacharias and Elizabeth were preacher's kids. <laughs> preacher's kids. What would you know? Today, what are our impressions about preacher's kids anyway? Sila yung mga pasaway. Eh, napabayaan ni Jorbe yung mga anak niya eh. Walang ginawa, kundi pumunta ng Baguio. Pumunta ng Puerto Princesa. Pagdating, hindi man lang nakita yung mga anak, umalis na naman. Pasaway, pumasok ng fraternity. Nauwi sa primarital sex. But here you find a different account. John, the first communication director in the New Testament, is from the family of preacher's kids. Preachers, can I see your hands here? Ordained ministers. Ordained ministers, come on. Are you a changer, ordained ministers? Take care of your families. The best faithful members of the church must come from ministers' families. Otherwise, the members of this church who respect and give an esteem to our ministers may fail because we have never lived up with God's expectations. What? I have big, my mind imagines beyond to think that what if we can put the gospel on TV and our ministers don't walk according to what we preach? Then we fail. What's the use of TV? And so, the advent of the Adventist gospel on TV is a call for ministers to do housekeeping in their own homes. Because more than anyone else in the church, once we put our distinct message on national TV, the first, the limelight, will first be focused on the ministers. Ministers, Take care of your families. You will never stand before the judgment bar of God to say, Lord, probably you can close the other eye, your other eye to look at the faults of my children because I've been busy in your work. You can't do that. You see, the first communicator was born from a preacher's kid's family. There you have it. Zacharias and Elizabeth were preacher's kids. Wow. I love this story. I love this story. Let's go on with verse 7. And they had no children because that Elizabeth was what? Was what? Was barren. Don't sleep on me. Come on, answer. And they were both, were now well, what? Stricken in years. Scholars would tell us that it is more likely that uh, Zechariah was pushing towards the end of his 60s and was just getting for his 70s. So let's say, for the sake of our imagination, Zechariah was around 70s. Huh? And here, God will use them to send forth the first communication director. You see, God operates in miraculous ways. We are stunned. We stand in awe of how God operates His mighty works. I was telling last Sabbath, one who, one who said, you know, Pastor, what makes it hard for worship? It's because we don't see the God we worship. If we can only see Him, our faith will be more solid. If we can touch Him, if we can smell Him, if we can see Him, worship would have been more easier. Or I should say, worship would have been easier. You see, friends, there is one element in worship that you cannot do away. And that made Mary sang her song. If you will go back to the song of Mary, when the Lord, when God appeared to him through an angel, he stood 
She stood in awe of God's miraculous ways. The awesomeness of God makes him worthy of our worship. Amen? The moment you begin to measure God, the moment you will be able to see God and put him in a microscope, that ends. That ends. The God we serve. God will remain miraculous. God will remain unfathomable. God will remain unexplainable if there is such a word. Oh yes. Here's God calling Elizabeth and Zacharias that they will have a child. And it came to pass, verse 8, that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn what? Incense. When, the, when he went into the temple of the Lord. Look, this is how it happened. This is how John was born to be the first communication director in the New Testament. Let me tell you the story. Zechariah was a priest. Are you still following? Thank you for, for this lapel mic. Zechariah was a priest. And you see, there are three orders in the temple for a day. You know the temple, right? You have there the courtyard. Then you have the first apartment, which is known as what? Come on. Holy place. And beyond the curtain, you have the compartment. You have that apartment. You have that space where you find the Ark of the Covenant, known as most holy place. The priest would serve in the temple every day for three orders. Like nurses, huh? they have three shifts. The first order was to take the coals. The coals. Okay? Then put that in. And the second order was to replace that into the altar of incense. And the third order was to minister before the curtain beyond in that altar of incense. And, and Zechariah was one among the priests. So when they come early in the day, who would be chosen for the first order, for the second order, for the third order? The most solemn order was the third one. Because once you get to serve on the third order, you don't get to serve for the rest of your life. And so it's very solemn. It's one thing. It's the only thing that you get to do once in your life. And how it would be done? All priests would come in circle. All of them would come in circle. And they would choose how many fingers would they raise. They could raise five. They could raise six. They could raise seven. You couldn't raise 11 fingers, right? Unless you have an 11th one right here. They would choose by their own freedom. They could choose how many fingers would they put up. And all the fingers that have been raised will be counted. One, two, three, four, five. Until 70, you wouldn't get to know whose finger it would fall at number 70 because you wouldn't know how many the others would raise. Are you following the story? Are you still with me for the next two hours? Yes. So they raised their hands. They raised their hands. All the priests raised their hands. Some raised only one. Some raised only two. Some only raised five. But the moment they were all raised, they started counting. Number 68, 69, 70. Then you're on the first order. Raise it again in random. 68, 69, 70. You're on the second order. The moment the third order comes, all of them raises their hand in solemn appreciation how God chooses someone to lead a very solemn task. During the day. And when their fingers were raised. Zechariah also raised. How many fingers? I don't know. Don't start asking me. But he raised the number of fingers he thought for that day. Without knowing it. Without knowing it. He wasn't even expecting it. The count was long, 50. Then it turned 60. Zechariah was keeping up, holding up his fingers. 61, 62, 63. The old Zechariah not wanting to come to that lot. 
as old as he was, 68, 69, pa, 70. It was who? Zechariah. He was going at the late prime years of his life for the third order in the century. Doom, 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 doom. This was something for Zechariah. He will be going towards the inner sanctuary and do this solemn task once in his own life. He knew that he will be representing the people of God because by the time the trumpet will be sounded, wherever you are, all the Jews, all the Jews will be kneeling down, will be praying in whatever position because the third order priest is already offering the prayers in the altar of incense. You're following, friends. It was a great time for Zechariah. Lord, in awe and in appreciation of God's love, he never thought that he will be doing this in his late 60s. And as he prepares, the first order went with him, the second order went with him, the coals were transferred, everything has been prepared. Two of the priests went out, and you're now all alone, Zechariah. You're now all alone, Zechariah, to do your third order ministry. And we were told by the story that while Zechariah was offering the altar of incense, verse 11, verse 11, and there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing where? Where? On the right side of the altar of incense. If you would be Zechariah, you will be amazed, you will be frightened, you will be troubled. You will probably run for your life. What a moment for Zechariah. Friends, I'd like to tell you this. If you are in God's ministry, whether it's women's ministry, whether it's youth ministry, it is a solemn task. Whether you're in the union, whether you're in the division, or you are in a local church, whatever position you do and ministry for the Lord, you are in a solemn task. Oh yes, he knew it very well that it was the angel of the Lord that appeared to him. Where? On what side? God knows where to appear. He wouldn't just appear anywhere else, but he would exactly be there at the place he wanted to benefit him. He appeared on the right side. I'm glad the angel didn't appear on the left. Or at the middle, it was just exactly the right place for the angel to appear. And there in verse 12, And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Isn't it that this has always been our gesture? Our position, whenever a task is given to us, we shrink, we criticize, we, we, we tremble in fear. How can we do that? Ha, ha, ha. Why, Lord? Why, why me? I, I mean, how many priests do you have? Why me? You could have appeared with the other priests who, who must have served the other week. Why this week? I'm already in my 70s. You know that I'm not good in speech. You know I have these weaknesses. But when God calls you, He also equips you. Amen. And so Zacharias was cold. I can almost imagine, friends, whenever we are given a big responsibility, we shrink. And that has never changed until to this time. Until to this time, it has never changed. We are still the same Zacharias shrinking whenever we're called to do a task. Because that has been my experience. When, when the three union, unions with their respective officers come together and finally decided, yes, we're going on national TV. But because it can't be done only by NPUC, it can only be done by SPUC, all the unions throughout the Philippines must come together to put the Advent Gospel on national TV. The moment that was spelled out, you know what was my feeling? I was trembling in fear. Lord, I'm pretty safe down there as a teacher, as an instructor, and as a director for the Adventist University of the Philippines. Why in my time? 
Why don't you raise Larry G. Fair and get him here? Why in my time, as young as I was, and I am, I have three kids to all race. My eldest is just at grade six. She needed my time. My youngest is at only at five years old. The middle is at grade three. Why me, Lord? I would often tremble. Why me? You know how hard this would be. This will eat up all of my time. Nakita niyo po ba ang butok balat ko? I would often ask God. I miss my family friends. I miss my family. Right now, I could have been with my wife and my family. But I have to do the Lord's work because for which I have been tasked to perform. I love my daughters. Oh, by the way, I have a complete family. A wife, one daughter, and two girls. (laughs) All complete. Would you ask for more? No more. You have one daughter, two girls, what more? You have all of them in the family. And I miss them. I have never asked anyone from God except that what he has given me. But I miss them. And I shrink. There are times when I would think of this. Right now, we are preparing the studio for a complete renovation. The entire conference hall of the North Philippine Union Conference will be totally renovated to house the first studio right here in Luzon. And we're not talking, I was talking to Tata Wewalago, sabi niya, eh, papano, pastor, kung maipundar na nga natin yung 100,000, why do you keep on saying 1,000? We are talking about millions. We are talking about 534 million in the next five years. He never got used to saying millions. Minsan, tumatay ako ng apat na beses sa maghapon. Just thinking how it could be done. At times, I come late from office. I, I have to, I even have to prove myself. One president, one president during the executive committee raised a question. We are embarking on a half billion project that has never been done since 1905 of this church. Are we putting this half billion in the hands of someone who doesn't even have exposure, who doesn't even know, who don't have the skills in this TV production? You know what I said? Deep in my heart, Lord, why don't you change me? Let's just get somebody else. I want to go back. I want to go back. This union office is never a promotion. I lost my beautiful environment among the trees to the floods and dirty streets of Metro Manila. Is there a monetary exchange? None. I lost even the full scholarship of my children. I go to the union, I have to pay my share. But I go to the university, all my children will go in their own scholarship full, full. F-U-L-L, full scholarship. Why would I go? Many times I would shrink to God, Lord, why? Who would support this? Pag ito binuksan namin sa mga tao, sa dami ng mga reklamador dyan, ikaw na, parang, parang ikaw ang nakaisip mag-TV kung magtanong sila. Parang ikaw lang nakaisip mag-TV. Parang sarili mong programa. Pagka nakapagtanong. I often shrink. But here I am encouraged. Brother Jones, we find God's ways of doing things in His own time, in His own perspective, in His own way. Amen? Oh, yes. I love this story. But when the when, verse 13, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Huh? Is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Communication directors, those who have attended with me 
I have oriented you with what is to happen in the next five years. Won't you change that name, John, with your own name now and help me with this task in the church of our loving God? And his name is Jones. <laughs> huh? And his name will be what? Will be what? Change your name. Change John to have your name. Because we all have to share this responsibility. Are you tired? Verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his what? His birth. You see, friends, this is where I find encouragement. This may be a hard task, but the moment we get this kicked off, jackrabbit start, many will find it to benefit the church, their faith. They will join. They will rejoice. You will be encouraged. This is where I find my solace. Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. If TV will be our latest communication media of the Adventist gospel, then it got to be distinct. It got to be distinct. It shouldn't be like GMA. That's why I took a program analyst from GMA to join the orientation team. Because I, I wanted her to see how we would propel these Adventist programs in our national television. And she would be able, Janet would be able to compare what is GMA 7, what is ABS-CBN 2. How could she make it distinct? Because at the hem of all of this orientation, at the hem of all this seminar, she is going to talk about the way we do it on commercial TV, the way we should be different on the Adventist channel. She was telling me, Pastor, bakit hindi na lang kaya iba? That was also my question. But I want you to be in because I need someone who has the heart for the work and who knows what it is there in commercial TV. Come, join me. And I'm glad. People like this, you don't pay them. You don't pay them. Because she can send that I have never given her a single centavo. She does this because she loves the church. She loves the God she serves. When I took several more guest speakers, she, they said, Pastor, can you pick me up from this place, bring me to Baguio, then get me home? Never mind. Stay put. <laughs> I don't need you in the ministry. I needed someone I couldn't pay. Because pag utang na loob, you cannot pay back. Amen? Amen. Mr. Pasamba, who uses his own camera, would come and teach how the internet will propel the church in the next few more years. I never paid him a single centavo. Did I pay you, Mr. Pasamba? <coughs> because they love the work. All the DVDs, Pastor Pulito, that I have placed here in MPN for free were all from the pocket of Mr. Pasamba. Because they love the work of God. Don't ask something from me, Pastor, if I ask you to write a script, if I ask you to write an article for Mispa, how much do you pay me? The hell with it. We are not going to pay anything that we have received from God for free because God's grace is free. You are there in GMA 7 because God has a purpose for your life. The same with John. John came at the right time because God has a purpose, but his life is to be distinct from the others. Look, he will not taste strong drink, neither will he put anything in him that is not of God. In verse 17, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Oh. There's a new name here, friends. There's a new name here. It's no longer just John the Baptist, but he will come. John, the first 
communication director ever recorded in the gospel will come in the spirit of who? I would love my time to be a communication director had Larry Jeep Fair only be present. Huh? So he could tell me, oh, Pastor Joe, this is what you're going to do. Anak, anak, ganito ang gagawin mo. Huh? Balong. Gaito'y piaramidin mo. You know what I'm trying to say? But he was nowhere. None of them. We've got to start from scratch. When Cagayan de Oro started with Hope TV, the entire, the entire Hope Channel International with its president was there in Cagayan de Oro, put up every block for the tower until the transmitter is up. But NPUC, none. I'm not saying they do that to us too. But my point is, the more we are indebted to God to cling to Him because we cannot trust anyone except Him. Oh yes. The work of John the Baptist will be very, 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 very similar to that work of Elijah. Huh? Verse 17. He will come in the spirit and power of Elijah to what? To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the judge to make what? Come on, come on. To make what? To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This is the task of Elijah. This was the task of Elijah. This was the task of John the Baptist. And it carries, it keeps on ringing to our time today. We will still do the same task as it was with Elijah and John the Baptist. Amen? It has never changed, friends. The same God who called Elijah, the same God who called John the Baptist, is the same God who has given the same task to them to our time today to prepare a people for His coming. Oh yes. If there will be national TV for the Adventist Network, it got to be along this line. We will not put up TV because we would like to promote our books or veggie meat. The image of the beast. They were asking me, Pastor, bakit naman image of the beast yung Benjamin? O di ba beast? Baka. Baka. Ayaw mo kumain ng baka. Gumawa ka ng image ng baka. O image of the beast. Gagalit kayo. You see what I find here, friends? When, 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 Zechari- when John the Baptist was called to prepare a people, we are told that his coming will be in the spirit of Elijah. And that will cause the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. There will be division. Our TV should not just lull the rest of the world. It's another TV network. No! We're wasting half billion pesos for five years if our national Adventist TV would only be just like GMA7 with all its teleserie. Are you getting me, friends? If we are going to put national TV for the Adventist church, it must not copy the way Unlimited Sports does it. And air Pacquiao. Because we do not subscribe to boxing. Yes, it will divide. It will divide. The truth will divide. And the thing is, the thing is, can I have your ears? Oftentimes we think about persecution coming from without. The persecution we all have to anticipate and to pray by God's grace that we may survive is the persecution that comes from within. Because the persecution will turn the hearts of the father to the children and the children to their parents. Who will be your persecutors? Come on, stop putting only our fingers on the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. The persecution, the persecutors will be among our family members. 
If we don't prepare them, if we don't get them by the grace of God prepared for the coming, those who knew you best will also persecute you best. Who knows you better, Pastor Gandesa? Of course, your wife. If the wife is unconsecrated, she will be the most worst. I should say, she will be the worst persecutor of your life. That's why God still gives us time to put our families together. Do not abandon your unbelieving spouses. The Bible says, let's cling to them that by our faithfulness, they may be consecrated and sanctified by God. Before you go somewhere else, do a ministry for your family, for your relatives, because they knew you better than anybody else. Your child that is unconverted knows you better and where you are than any of the persecutors around the globe. They will be the worst persecutors of your life. Pray to God that the members of our families may be brought to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Never abandon them. Abandonment is not in the dictionary of a faithful Adventist. Because with him, with her, nothing is impossible to touch and convert an unyielding heart to God. Oh yes, friends, it will come. And our national TV will have this distinction and its message. Look at this, friends. I would like to repeat it. In Malachi 4, 5 and 6. We find the same statement down here in Luke chapter 1 verse 17. The one I read a while ago. Go back to Malachi 4, 5 and 6. And you will find that the last few verses in the Old Testament is the precursor of this statement in Luke chapter 1 verse 17. Did you find it? In Malachi 4, 5 and 6, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah. Elijah has long been taken to heaven before Malachi come, came. Are you, family, are you following? And there, he, there it is. It is being prophesied in the last few verses of the Old Testament. It is being said that, Behold, I will send you Elijah. What are you going to do? Pull back Elijah from heaven to earth? That's why we were told by Jesus Christ in his ministry that this prophecy found its fulfillment where? In the life of who? John the Baptist. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall what? The same thing. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Oh yes, friends. As it was in the ministry of Elijah, so will it be. So was it in the life of John the Baptist. And so will it be on our national TV for the remnant church in our time today. Are you still picking up? Elijah fought with how many priests of Baal? Our TV get must come also in that scenario. If our TV would also put the teleserie, then we're nothing so different from the rest of the network. Are you following me, friends? They will question their lifestyle. It will, the, our programs will question their diet. They will be moved to think, this is a different TV station. Because it is actually the present fulfillment of the work of Elijah and that of John the Baptist, the first communication director. Oh yes, the coming of John the Baptist and as it will be in our time today will be a call for repentance. It will call the people to prepare for the coming of God. Didn't you notice that? I placed it in, in gray so that you would focus on it, you know. I don't want to place so much na may gumagalaw na kambing dito lumilipad na ang I want you to use some strategy here. Look, the word prepare of John the Baptist, his task of preparing is equal to that of what we are supposed to do today. 
prepare stands for proclaiming for P, repentance for rep, end for A, reformation for R, E for the end times. Did you get it, friends? The work of John the Baptist is to prepare a people, and that means to proclaim repentance and reformation in the end times. It is nothing different today. We should also prepare a people coming when God comes to take us all to heaven. Our battle cry, repentance. And what? And what? Are you still here? And reformation. Repentance and reformation is our work in the national TV, Hope Channel Philippines. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not to advertise shampoo. It's not to advertise car paint. We are to put every second of national TV for the Adventist Church on repentance and reformation. Three things. As I've told you in public speaking, repentance will lead to three things. Our national TV will bring this work in the hearts of people. If you repent, there will be a what? A change of heart. There will be a change of heart. Look what happened to Zechariah. Huh? When the angel appeared before him, and the coming of John the Baptist was announced, in his 12 stricken years, he couldn't believe. What did the angel do with Zechariah? Huh? Come on, follow the long story in Luke chapter 1. What happened to Zechariah? The moment he said his unbelief, huh? the angel said, Okay, so that's how you want it, Zechariah. I will give your wife huh? nine months of silence in your home. You will never be able to speak. Only your wife. Kaya mag-ingat kayo, mga lalaki. <laughs> Kung ayaw ninyong padlakan ng Panginoon yung mga bunganga. Huh? Sabi ng mga misis, Dad, pakinig mo sabi ni Pastor. Huh? Gusto lamang niya, no? nakatabi doon yung asawa, pakinggan mo sabi ni Pastor. He was given nine months silence because of his unbelief. You see, friends? But the moment John was brought out, he was delivered. The people asked Elizabeth, because Zechariah cannot talk. He cannot talk. It is the father who should give the name by custom and by tradition. Am I right? That's why they are called John, the son of. You get it? Bar Kokba, meaning the son of Kokba. Do you get me? But ja, but Zechariah cannot talk. See? Tinanggal lang pa kayo ng karapatan na magpangalan. Eh, lalaki pa naman ito, firstborn. The more Zechariah should have named him by all means. But because of his unbelief, pinadlakan yung bunga nga niya. I'm sorry for bunga nga. Pinadlakan ang bibig niya. And of course, who would they come to? Eh, sunod siyempre yung nanay na nagluwal. So pinangalanan ni Elizabeth. Sabi ni Elizabeth, his name will be called John. Come on, Elizabeth. Why would you name him John? Look at your genealogy. You don't have John. Look at your family tree. Do you have John there? Come on. But, but Elizabeth, with all humility, as a woman as she was, she said, she, the, the, the angel appeared to us and his name must be called John. They can't trust the woman. They went to the mute Zechariah. Huh? And they talk with Zechariah in sign language. Oh, what are you doing? Zechariah can hear. He couldn't only speak. Why would you talk in sign language? Talk to him verbally, public speaking. <laughs> verbally. And John, and Zechariah was given a paper. Huh? Kaya kasabi ko sa inyo eh, kung linya to ng mga communication director, ayaw mo mag-public speaking, which is the first media in communication, pinadla ka ng bunga nga. Oh. Eh hindi niya masabi yung pangalan, so binigyan siya ng papel. Print! Huh? Janet? Print! Sulat mo! 
isinulat. The, the, the story tells us that the moment, the moment, the moment, are you still with me? The moment the name of John was written on the paper, the padlock went swaying up and his mouth was open and he was able to say the name altogether, John. Oh yes, hallelujah. Amazing God. Kung hindi pinadlakan nyo ng Panginoon, baka nakapili pa yon ng ibang pangalan. See? For the nine months, baka ang pinangalan doon, Judas. For nine months, God changed the heart of Zechariah. From unbelief to belief. Because he is going to teach John faith. And so he changed his heart. And so for every repentant sinner, you will see the manifestation of the change of heart. Dati magagalitin siya. Ngayon, nabawasan. You, you get my point, friends? When there is repentance, it will lead you to the change of heart. Second, it will lead you to the change of what? Of lifestyle. See what kind of lifestyle the angel told Elizabeth and Zechariah here. There was a change of lifestyle. He will need a drink of wine. Huh? Hard drink. Strong drink. That was totally different from the prevailing custom at that time, Pastor Polito. Kaya minsan iniisip natin eh, uh, okay, ito po, ito po ang gagawin natin. Bakit? Napag-aralan nyo ba yan? May feasibility study ba yan? You see, sometimes when we present Hope TV, we are using it for half billion. Have you studied about it? Will there never be a scam about this? But you see here, God operates. When He operates something, He will also change the lifestyle. John the Baptist's lifestyle was totally different from theirs. Am I right? Third, if there is repentance, if God will prepare the hearts of people in repentance, there will also be a change of what? In name. The name John wasn't in the genealogy, neither of Elizabeth, not even of Zechariah, but God placed John for a name. Yes, God will not only change your heart from unbelief to belief, God will not only change your lifestyle from worldly to godly, but He will also make a change of your name from earthly to a spiritual name. Oh yes, friends. In the Bible, when God converts someone, He also gives the one with a new name. You follow? In the time of Jacob, huh? When Jacob was called, when Jacob repented, when he returned back to God, he was given a new name. Israel. Abram, when he was called to be the father of all nations, he was given a new name. Abraham. I can go through the long list, friends. When God calls you to do something, your earthly name is changed to a spiritual name. It will no longer just be Joe Orbe, but he will be given a name followed after the, the Christ he serves, and he is called a Christian. That's why we do not subscribe calling anyone who is a believer in this church as SBA. Because it, it's, it doesn't make sense. But we would rather be called Adventists. We don't use SBA. SBA does not have any meaning at all. But we carry the name Adventist. A shortcut for Seventh-day Adventists. You see, friends? Yes, our names are changed as well. Did you have your new spiritual name already? Have you talked with your God? Have you come to Him and asked for a spiritual name? Or are you still living in the worldly pleasures of this world and profess that I'm an Adventist? Pagod na po ako. Pagod na po akong maglaba, magpalit ng damit, magplansya, pasok sa luggage, travel from here, ride airplane. Pagod na po ako. I wanted Jesus to come from my heart. Unprepared that I'm my, I may be, God judge me, but I am already tired, friends. 
Hindi dahil ayaw ko nang gawin ang gawain ko. No. I love to do the work. But you see, it has already been a long way. Is the coming of Jesus still alive in your hearts? Or has it only became a routine, an expression of your faith, but deep inside, you still wanted an iPad before Jesus returns? You still wanted to finish that house before Jesus returns? Oh yes, occupy till I come. But, but is it your business that occupying your heart? You rationalize, okay, occupy till I come. Don't be a fanatic, pastor. But let me ask you, is still Jesus the one that occupies your heart? Or is it already your adultery? Your business? Your cravings for gadgets? Is there a change of heart, lifestyle, and name? Ellen White says, this transformation will lead us to seven points. Number one, it will lead us to a fearless preaching. Did you get me? If there is a change of heart, if there is a change of lifestyle, if there is a change of name, there will it lead to a fearless preaching. Hindi yung, hindi yung didibatihin mo yung iglesia ng Cristo. That is not fearless preaching. That is nonsense preaching. Fearless preaching is naming sin by its right name. Getting our distinct message boldly in the forefront in every television set. That is preaching the Advent message fearlessly. If we do this, friends, God will bless the TV ministry in the entire archipelago. Look at Elijah. Huh? Ikaw si Elijah, dire-diretso eh. Doon sa doon sa kaharian eh. Walang makagalaw kay Elijah eh. Huh? Tuwing hahawak kay Elijah, he must have seen, he must have been seen crossing through the eyes of the throne. But none can touch him. Tuwing sigurong hahawakan ng ganun, akma pa lang, bubuwal na eh. Because he was a fearless preacher. Pagdating niya doon, sa harapan ng hari, he proclaimed repentance and redemption in the face, in the face, in the face of King Ahab. And the moment he was done, poof, he's gone. Nobody could see him. Panood-nood pa kayo ng magic kung saan-saan sa TV. Dito lang sa Biblia, napakamaraming nang, nangyaring himala eh. Kita mo yun? Walang makahawak sa iyo, tuloy-tuloy. Read the account of patriarchs and prophets. Or, I'm saying, prophets and kings. Elijah went straight to the throne. The moment he saw the face of Ahab, he spoke straight to his nose. And the moment he was done, poof, he was gone. There was a search party given to the left, to the east, to the west, to the north, but he couldn't be found. In a single moment, Elijah was gone. See what God can do? And it should happen in our national broadcast. We should preach the word of God boldly. Let's talk about our vegetarian diet. Ang nakakalungkot ngayon. Somebody's talking about it. We have been given the spirit of prophecy. As these people who are endorsing it, who are not Adventists, where have they taken it? They will tell you. Scientific accounts prove what Ellen White, a second grader, has foretold years ago, years ago, when it was never even thought of. See, we should speak our message fearlessly. Second, it will also adapt a simple what? A simple diet and a lifestyle. What's the food of Elijah? Come on, tell me. Food of Elijah. Man, yan, locos and honey. <laughs> huh? What's the food of Elijah? Straight from the beaks of raven. Huh? And he was drinking from where? From where? Straight from the streams or brook of what? Of Sherry. Huh? 
May soft drinks ba doon? Ay, pasintabi na po. Pero inuna ko yan eh. Ninagay ko muna oh. Fearless preaching para hindi kayo makaka-ek dito. What about chooks to go? I'm not telling you it's wrong to eat chicken. But the thing is, we have a better food in the Adventist church. Live by it, friends. We have a message. The moment we put our lifestyle on national TV, it will either be a blessing or a curse. Because if we don't live what we preach, it will become a curse. Soft drinks pa lang yan. Simple diet and lifestyle. Even the clothes that we wear, napakaraming hukay-hukay sa bagyo. It doesn't have to be very expensive. It only got to be modest, it got to be clean and neat, and it got to be orderly and appropriate. Simple as that. Minsan eh, hindi tayo makapunta sa church pagka, ay nasuot ko na to last Sabbath eh. Sasabihin, hindi na ako nagpapalit. Eh, paano nga kung yun na lang eh? See friends, we've got to live every aspect of our lifestyle according to a simple calling. Third, huh? modest what? Clothing. What about the, do you know what's the clothing of John the Baptist? Huh? Was it part of the prevailing world in his time? No. What was he wearing? Huh? Camel skin? Sino magsusuot niyan, goodness? Huh? Tanggalin mo yung suot mo, Sir Jones. Yan na lang leather mo ang itira mo. Pag hindi yan uminit sa katawan mo. But he was so different. Not because he just wanted to be weird. He only has a what? A simple belt to carry when anyone could wear a one seam robe. He was totally different. Our clothing would be different. The moment we put our message in the airwaves, if you are the kind of ladies who wear the fitting pants na low waist na pagsasakay ka sa jeep, pilit mong ibinababa yung damit mo. <laughs> eh, kasi nagsuot ka pa ng ganun? Di wala ka sanang problema ang kakaganon. Pagka tinitingnan ka na, gagalit ka. Eh, ganun kasi ang ginawa mo eh. You know, friends, clothing is very important. Because before you can open your mouth to speak of God's love, the first impression people would have is how you look with your clothing. Remember that. So elders, pastors, let us dress neatly with full dignity. We just can't be dressed shabbily. Modesty should always be the name of the game when it comes to choosing our clothing. Oh yes. This is important. While I was starting with CLC, Media Productions, before I left for AUP, I was told by the, by the uh, production manager, sabi niya, Pastor, mula ngayon po, hindi na kayo bibili ng damit niyo kung saan saan. We are providing a credit card for you to buy your clothes, signature clothes. Only you could wear, and once you've worn it, it will never be worn. Nobody should know where you're buying it. And you're going to buy it through this card. I was thinking deep inside. If we're going to do TV in this way, the hell with it. Let's stop TV. Let's stop TV. TV is not for the Adventist church to show our extravagance. TV for the Adventist church is to show how simple our diet, our lifestyle, even our clothing. Number four, it will also lead to what? For us to run before the dignitaries. Huh? Our national TV would show the world that we are not scare off. We should browse elbows with our government leaders because the government has been established by God. They are our partners. If a senator will dress dignified, 
So should every representative of the Adventist Church dress even more dignified than any government leader. I love the literature evangelists. My father trained me to become a literature evangelist at grade 4. While all my peers were playing Jolen, Tex, Sipa, ay, mali, dito pala, Sipa, I was there in front of the mirror. My dad said, look at your haircut. Is it touching your ears? Look at your shirt. Is it well ironed and kept? Look at your pants. Does it only have one line? What about your shoes? Did you shine it? Okay. Raise your foot. Back. Madumi dito. Balek. He was telling me, you cannot compromise with cleanliness. Integrity comes even if you are not sin, you still do the right thing. Are you following, friends? Yes. We should come before dignitaries. We should talk with them about how we stand as a church. In the RHBL, how do we talk about it? In the divorce law, do we have our position as an Adventist church? I wouldn't tell you the long story. But I was given the opportunity to represent the church on national TV, on Rad, on TV5, hosted by Senator Dick Gordon. I was there with Lisa Massa on the affirmative, and I was the anti-divorce on the other side with Senator Cayetano, the younger gentleman. All the while, they had in their mind that the Adventist church was pro-divorce. Why? Because six years ago, when she was writing, Lisa Massa was writing the paper. She talked to a minister, an Adventist minister. And the minister told her that the Adventist church stands pro-divorce. The moment I was there, there was a total panic just within myself. The TV5 personnel went there, went to NPUC, and asking, uh, can we have the Adventist Church represent tonight's debate? Tonight. That's not next week. Tonight's debate. So I was there. They were talking. And the moment I heard that, uh, what will be the topic? It will be on the divorce bill for public affairs. The moment I heard public affairs, and that's part of my job, I started pulling back towards the field. That's not me. That's not me. Oh, yes, yes, we can do that. You will have Pastor Joe Orbe tonight. The moment I heard that, I shrink. I almost fell. I have no choice. Get my jacket, went straight to Global City. That's where they have their station for TV5. The moment I was rushed in to the preliminary room, a lady went in, rushed to my face, and started doing that on my face. Stop it! What are you doing? <laughs> Sir, this is makeup. You have five minutes before take. The hell with makeup. I don't want... But sir, you would look oily before the camera. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. Wait. I'll just wipe it. <laughs> Sir, no more oil. But you look pale. Okay, okay, just, okay, sir, I'll do that. Sir, sir, can you do this? <laughs> you see, if we wouldn't have our own TV, we wouldn't get to show them what should exactly be done. And she started doing that with my lips. <laughs> what are you doing? Sir, sir, nandiyan na po, ganunin na lang, oh. They are totally obscured how we live our lives. I was ready. I was ushered in. In a short while, Senator Gordon will be here. Pastor Joe Orbe, you'll be seated here. Senator Cayetano, you'll be seated here. 
Then the rest of the ladies were seated on the other side for a debate on the divorce law. The moment I sat there, I was the only one holding my Bible. Senator Cayetano was holding her, his eye pen. <laughs> they, we are totally different from how things are practiced in the world. Totally different. Then, uh, sir, sir, can you, can you put this? Then they started putting the lapel right here. It shouldn't be seen, Pastor. Dick Gordon came in. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, ladies. He sat down. This is debate on, us, on divorce. Remember, you just have to crush. That was his term. Crush the buzzer. If you have to speak, you don't need to wait for the others to finish. Get it straight. This will be pa 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 pa. This will be totally different. I was telling myself, why am I here? <laughs> the last time I had a debate was an Iglesia Ni Cristo, and I, and I jumped over the window <laughs> to escape the bullet. I never did a debate from then on. Here I am, exactly in the position of a debate on national TV, on TV5. Why am I here, Lord? I, I was resenting the fact that I was there. But here comes segment number one. Don't look at Senator Gordon. Look at the cameras. The studio was so small. Silence on the set. Five, four, three, two, pa. Senator Gordon makes his initial introduction for the segment. Pa, 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 pa. Magbabalik po kami. At sa aming pagbabalik, balitaktakan dito sa radyo, sa TV 5. Pa, ka. I was totally spellbound. This is how they do TV. I was pulled by, I was pulled by Lisa Massa. Pastor, what are you doing? Why are you seated there? Well, I said, I was made to sit here. She said, are you not pro-divorce? What in the world did you ever think that we are pro-divorce in the Adventist church? And she told me exactly what it was. That six years ago when they were writing the bill, for the divorce, they talked to an Adventist minister and the position was pro-divorce. To make the long story short, segment number two, we're ready, silence on the set, five, four, three, you're on the air. Segment number two, exchange of words up to the last segment on number five. Friends, let me tell you this. Lisa Massa walked straight to her car after the program that evening. And I held her hand by the elbow and asked her, Mom, can I have a short talk with you? And she said, Pastor, I never and can believe that the Adventist church is anti-divorce. All I am saying, Mom, is this. The Adventist church do not resort to divorce as a way to mend marital conflicts. We are pro towards acceptance, forgiveness. And she was telling me, Pastor, you are totally different tonight. And the only thing God made me to remember was to ask her, Mom, how long have you been married? She was startled. She took back two steps backward to get just in line with me. And she told me, Pastor, I'm happily married, blessedly married for the last 35 years. That exactly the answer I wanted from her. Because even if I cannot nail down that divorce thing out of the picture, deep within her, she still believes in the sanctity of marriage. And finally, I ushered her back to her car. And I told her, and she told me, Pastor, I'm sorry for the remarks. And I wanted you to know that the Adventist church are my, is my friend. I was, I was surprised. And she said, and I, and I asked her, why mom? You see, I have Adventist relatives. And I'm a strong adherent and believer of every Adventist book in your catalog. Amen? Sabi ko na nga ba eh, kulpultur na naman yan. Kaya yung mga presidente ng ating mga conference na walang malasakit sa gawain ng kulpultor, Nagkakaroon ng problema. 
Because they don't recognize that second to none is the work of literature evangelism. They should be a workforce with the ministry. Sabi ko na, kulpultor, may kagagawan. You see, friends, what I was thinking at that time, huh? if, if I resented going that evening to TV5, would we be able to correct on national TV our position in the divorce bill? Would I? Definitely no chance at all. And we have gone in history, we have been known in the Philippines to be pro-divorce. I thank God for this opportunity. I hope you see how important it is. Number five, repair God's altars. When we are for transformation, we will repair the altars of God in our where? Homes. Bring back the morning worship. Bring back the evening worship. That's why we have a call for seven, seven, seven. Seventh-day Adventists praying seven o'clock in the evening or morning seven times in a week. Because we need to repair the altars of God. Did Elijah repair the altar of God? Did he? He did. And so it was for John the Baptist. So will it be on national TV for the Adventist message to this time. Pero kung hindi tayo nag-worship sa bahay, na una yung teleserye, o minsan minamadali pa, dali na, dali na, daddy, at magsisimula na si... Ano yung teleserye yung pinapanood nyo? Ano nga yun? Oh, walang sumasagot. I hope, friends, we would be able to repair the altar of God in our homes. There will never be true revival until we repair the altar of God in our homes. Give a sense of awe for our children of the God we serve. Don't allow them to play while, while you're doing your worship. Make programs that will attract them to God on your worship. Because we believe the children are the closest to God's heart. Number six, I'm almost to end. If we are for transformation, there will be what? Persecution. And we would need to endure persecution. Endure persecution. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this, friends? Do you see the God or the persecution? Do you see the hardship or the shelter of God? My wife called up this morning. She said, Dad, you need to come home quick. I was assigned to speak this coming midweek at Pasay Adventist Church on the seven last plagues. I almost fell. Seven last plagues. Dad, I don't even want to imagine about it. How could I even preach about it? We all fear the seven last plagues. But deep down, rooted within our understanding of prophecy, that this will be for those who would receive the mark of the beast. And God will shelter as it was for Israel in those times, away from this persecution. Oh, friends. Are we ready for this? I may have spoken too long now. But one thing I would like to point. Persecution will be inevitable. It will happen to you first in your homes. Your unconverted spouse. Your unconverted children. Your unconverted parents. They will be the first persecutors of your faith. If we don't work now while the day is up. Time will come. They will be the worst persecutors. Oh yes, the last one. It says there, preparing for God's work, preparing for the end time. Putting the TV for the Adventist church should manifest humility. It should not be a stone that we may set our feet on to magnify what we have accomplished. For Elijah, for, El for John the Baptist, their lives were manifested fully with humility. Is the Lord coming now? Are we made humble already? Or are we still fighting over the positions of the church? Are we still fighting over 
the doctrines of the church. Did God make us humble already? Friends, are we ready to yield what we have in order to follow God? Are we? This is a call for today. Yes, friends. We should prepare. We should proclaim repentance and reformation in the end times. Not only in our lives, but even on national TV. How many of you would like to commit today? It's almost one o'clock. How many of you would like to stand today and tell God, Lord, I'm ready to take the challenge of being a John the Baptist in this time? How many of you would like to say, Lord, you know my past life. You know what I have been in the past life. But here I am. Change my life. Take away that padlock from my mouth. Change my heart. Change my lifestyle. Give me a new spiritual name. Lord, I'm willing to do that. Take me by my hand. Whatever there is in my life today. If that is your commitment, friends, I want you to join me as I pray for you. As I pray for this national broadcast that we're going to do. Because I believe God calls people to stand for what is right. The Lord bless your hearts, friends. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your decisions. Because I know the God we serve will get us through. Like it was with John. Like it was with Elijah. So will it be for Hope Channel on national broadcast. And for this church to this time. Shall we pray? Dear God. We have spoken long. We have studied your scriptures. Because we wanted to be ready. We wanted to prepare also a people. Whom you will meet from the clouds of heaven. How great and heavy the burden is. To put your gospel on national TV. But teach us to trust you always. That it is not by our might. But nor by our power. But by the spirit of God. Can this work be done? Place in our hearts, dear Lord, our commitment, our passion, our consecration, that each of us will take part so that this message can ring in the hearts of people because we live what we preach. Because we take time to share the good news with them. Bless our families. Whatever problems we have right now, be very close to each one of us, dear Lord. Let this be opportunities for heaven to work in our lives. Change us, O oh God. For this is the only prayer we'd like to bring before you. For we ask this in the name of our only priest and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.